Hey folks, we're testing more games with GPTK and the new Metal FX stuff enabled. So we can see here in Spider-Man going from 40 frames per second with AMD's offerings to NVIDIA's offerings were enhanced by Metal FX and we're seeing an almost 2x frame generation and also confirmed in Metal HUD. So in my previous video I went through how to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again since I feel like I might not have done a great job. When you go to the Gameport Toolkit website, you could download this DMG. Once you have downloaded and open it in Finder, you'll see here in the Gameport Toolkit, there's an emulation environment for Windows. When you open that, it, you could get this redist, uh, redistribution folder, which has the D3D Metal stuff, which is basically GPTK, and then the Wine folder contains stuff that will allow you to use NVIDIA's DLSS on Metal FX. So what I showcase there is going to the package contents of crossovers. I'm using preview. I uh, find that this is the version that works to get it working. If you're following along and recording, uh, feel free to go backwards, but I'm showcasing what the folder path is. From here, you can simply just copy and paste or drag everything over, but then you also have to do something with the wine folder. It contains something called this NVGX on Metal FX, which is the DLSS, basically NVIDIA stuff on Metal. You have to rename these to the following nvgx.so and then in the windows folder you have to rename it to nvgx dll um, and once you do that you're almost ready to go in order to run this stuff i found out you need crossover preview so in your bottle settings you uh at least i think this is how you have to run it you have to toggle this crossover preview button and then you also have to configure the bottle so you configure the bottle, go to a finder window, hit go, hit the alt button, you'll get to a library. From there, once you go in the library, navigate the crossovers folder, um, which is for me listed alphabetically. And in crossovers, you go to Steam, and then here in your bottle settings, you go and you have to input this D3DM metal enable FX. Um, so this will also be in the description of what to put here. And then you're still not done. There's still one more thing you have to do. The last and final thing is when you go to crossovers, you can open the C drive, which opens a finder window where the C drive is located in system 32 or Windows system 32. You need to copy and paste these two files, which also came from the game port toolkit um, files. So when testing out Spider-Man, it's important to follow this step. When you hit play, it should open the configuration window. When you hit settings, you need to turn on frame generation here if you do want frame generation, um, because when you go into the settings, it will not allow you to uh, do it from the settings. So as you have been noticing in the metal HUD on the right, this is run on Mac OS 26, which has the newest GPTK installed. Um, you can see their game port toolkit 3.0 beta 1, and then it shows <laughs> As I accidentally hit the emoji button, uh, metal effects scaling is temporal and frame interpreter is enabled. So like I was saying, when you actually go to the settings and turn on AMD FSR, when you hit apply changes, um, you can actually go back to the NVIDIA one. So you are able to actually mix and match DLSS with AMD frame generation, but I found that the performance actually kind of degrades. I'm not exactly sure if this is um, Mac 26 thing, or this is just always what it is. I assume that it's just improper kind of scaling, where one thing is using Metal FX to do the the scaling, the LSS, and then I assume it's some kind of CPU or I don't know exactly how AMD frame gen works, but it actually taxes the system, and I find it's better actually to just turn frame generation off. Now testing out what happens when you do AMD FSR on quality settings with the AMD frame gen. We can see here um, kind of a negligible impact. The metal HUD no longer indicates using metal effects for the resolution scaling and no indication that the frame interpolator is using metal effects. So we get around 40 frames per second, which is, I'm not exactly sure. Um, Cause surprisingly when I was looking at my YouTube, I never actually made a Spider-Man M1 Max gaming. So um, take this with a grain of salt. Other people will test. Um, but like I said, when you do the settings that I showed in the beginning of this video, we'll be able to turn DLSS on. And then here we actually see that from what I found, 
is that when you turn frame generation off, you get better performance. And of course, you could also go to ultra performance, but you can see here what the resolution is is 500, and you get kind of you get you do get better performance, but in my opinion, the quality is kind of bad. Um, so I think as long as you can hit 60 frames per second, you're in a golden spot. So now we could see finally when you have just DLSS off and frame generation off. I found that at least on my M1 Max, on the Mac 26, on Game Port Toolkit 3, whatever overhead that AMD frame gen was doing was actually hurting the performance and using DLSS as the scaling agent, which was translated to metal effects. In my opinion, you get kind of better performance around 50. Um, it seems less choppy, stuff of that nature. So whether you use frame gen or not, some people kind of don't like it from a marketing standpoint. I don't typically notice any input lag, and I already think there is input lag with Macs. So I think people would enjoy, especially on MacBook Pros, or this could even work on MacBook Airs, hitting above 60 frames per second to get um, kind of the ProMotion full use. Now, unfortunately, Spider-Man 2 still doesn't run on GPTK and on Mac 26, but you can see that the DLSS does have options to be enabled, but there, for me, um, there was no uh, frame generation with, uh, with NVIDIA, and it wasn't in the settings, so that could be a game issue. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I need to do more research to see if this game even offers NVIDIA frame generation. But it looked like if this ever gets solved with the animation AV1 thing, um, you get pretty good performance at almost 60 frames per second. Um, but obviously, I don't think this is in a playable state with the lack of animations. All right, so the next game is Black Myth Wukong, which was kind of confusing to me. Um, kind of what I'm showcasing here with AMD FSR. Um, you do get frame generation, but with DLSS, it says that it's not enabled and to do it from the settings. Um, so here I try to keep a balanced um, testing methodology of putting the resolution to around 60 or 70 and on FSR doing the same thing. Then with the AMD options, um, there's some weird stuff going on there. I'm not sure why these things are still in Chinese, uh, but I wasn't exactly sure what they did. I think I tried to translate one's auto and one's not auto, and the other thing is uh, the re DLSS reflex thing. So anyways, I put them all together, overlaid, and we'll see them here. So NVIDIA DLSS is on the left, which you get around 70 frames per second starting out averaging there. Well, on the right, there's two AMDs. I believe that the better one has AMD frame generation on, and the lower one is just AMD FSR. Um, and note that with the M1 Max, actually found out also why Oblivion isn't working well, is there's some shaders that are incompatible with M1 Max that get solved in M2 and above. So if you do have an M1 Max, um, the only option is to upgrade. That being said, NVIDIA is doing pretty well here um, with just DLSS and the GPTK 3.0 bonuses. The last game I was able to test was Hogwarts. I just bought this when doing a hardware benchmark. I thought there was going to be some kind of setting, but all it does is tell me that I should be running it at Ultra. Um, so then we finally run into the game and we were able to change some of the settings. So the first thing I test out here, you can see is Metal FX is set to Temporal, which is basically DLSS is running. Um, NVIDIA DLSS and we're getting around 42-ish frames per second. When I minimize in and out, it gets rid of the cursor that's stuck on the screen. Um, so at least in this setting, it was 45. And then when we go into the settings, we get turn on frame generation, which actually does exactly what it says, which is 2x the frame. Uh, like, I guess, however it works, 2x the FPS. You don't have to generate half as many frames. Um, so when you turn that on, we can see here it automatically bumps up to around 90, which is true to the 2x theme going from 40 to 90 and of course people say that there's input lag um i mean honestly i played this game for th this is the most i played a game i actually found this game pretty enjoyable um so you get around 70 to 90 when outside and when inside this cave and then we could compare to how the amd fsr does this is probably the best test to run um to compare all the, the settings it allows you to run amd fsr and fsr 2 here we 
lights and have it set to AMD FSR quality. And you can see the metal HUD no longer has the temporal resolution. We get around 40 frames per second. Uh, and when we get outside, it dips down to 30-ish. I did even standard walk around uh, testing out what the um, FPS is. I will say, I'm not sure if this is a bug with the new GPTK 3.0, um, but it does seem that AMD frame gen isn't working as well. So I guess the true testing methodology would be to have another computer not running Mac 26, not running GPTK 3.0 to test out how this does. Um, but yeah, barely see any difference when turning on frame gen, still around 40 frames per second. Um, so yeah, I guess if other people would leave comments, have tested this on the M1 Max or a similar device, let me know how it is. Or if you plan on testing this on your own device and then you do you get a better performance lift, let me know in the comments so other people are aware of what the best settings are. So the final thing I want to do to end this video is kind of showcase what all the other games I have. Armored Core has uh, DLSS available, but no frame gen. Um, and I actually got pretty good performance there. Um, I'm not showcasing it here. Marvel Rivals on crossover previews doesn't run. It does run on non-preview version, but then sometimes I'll, I was getting a whole system crash where I have to restart. And then here with the Witcher, it doesn't load the launcher and actually just auto loads to DX11. I'm not sure how to actually fix that. But as we can see here, it runs in DX11 and still using Gameport Toolkit 3.0. Um, you can see that because it's not running DX12, there's no frame gen option. Though I'm not sure actually if I do figure out how to run in DX12 if frame gen is supported. Like I said, Black uh, the Black Myth game, Wukong game, does not allow for frame generation, even though it should technically be supported. And um, yeah, just trying to play around with the settings here. Everything was set to low um, and then the display turned off unlimited FPS. And when we go into the actual game, we see that everything running on low, you get around 120 frames per second or more, which is the full capability of ProMotion. Um, of course, all the M1 Max and above, or all the MacBook Pros, 14 and 16 inch have ProMotion, which is 120 frames per second. And then here we can actually turn the settings up just so people are aware. This again isn't running on frame gen, but um, I'm sure if it ever gets patched later with crossovers, you could bump it up to ultra, turn hair works off, and you still get a solid 60 to 70 frames per second, which I think is pretty good and playable. So let me know in the comments below what else you guys want to see. Hope you guys enjoy this type of content. I'm also trying to get more AI content out there as well, besides MacBook gaming. Uh, but yeah, see you guys in the next videos. Peace.